What's going on guys? My name is Tommy. Welcome back to the channel. It's time for another episode of Wednesday Afternoon Worship. You'll forgive I don't have my webcam on right now. We are currently in the chrysalis stage of building a studio. And I'd like to, you know, let that big reveal be a thing. Anyway, quick announcement. Henceforth, Wednesday Afternoon Worship will include at all times rules for deities in 1st and 2nd edition. Got a deity you want me to homebrew? Great. I'll do it for both. We've got Deific Obedience, Boons, Paladin Codes, if appropriate, in 1st edition. In 2nd edition, we've got Divine Fonts, Divine Skills, Divine Spells, Edicts, and Anathema. Because why can't we have both? Am I right, my friends? Today, by request, we're diving into the lore of the Forgotten Realms. It's all about a deity with many names. I will say, after staring at this wiki for like 10 minutes, trying to come up with the name I want to use, the name the deity uses for herself, Eyeless Tree. If you're liking what you're seeing, like, subscribe, ding that bell. If you've got requests, they go in the description. Patron requests jump to the front of the line because we need more 2E deities. Am I right? Yeah. Yeah, I am. Anyway, today's episode of Wednesday Afternoon Worship was brought to you in part by Mr. Nick Cirillo. Suppose we'll need to whip up something for Opsu in second edition before too long, huh? Soon. Soon, my friends. But in any case, Nick, thanks for your help, my man. Now let's hit it. All right, so we're diving straight into the lore of 3.5's Forgotten Realms on this one. Ilistree, Ilistree, oh God, that's so hard to say. Ilistree was the chaotic, good, drow goddess of song, dance, swordplay, hunting, moonlight, and general goodness and beauty. Within the drow pantheon known as the Dark Seldry. Of all the things in the world to be, she was the daughter of Corlon the Rathian and Lolf, two very important deities in that setting. After the drow of the Forgotten Realms turned to evil, Elistrae tried to be a mother goddess to her people and bring them hope for a new life, fighting to lead them back from the Underdark slash Darklands slash evil places. Free of the tyranny that the dark gods had been imposing upon them for so long. Of course, since Lolf is such a powerful deity, and like all the other drow gods are very evil, Illustrae's fight was long and uphill. Nevertheless, fight on she does. Her avatar appears as a female drow, about nine feet tall, with long, strong, graceful limbs and glossy obsidian dark skin. Generally speaking, as you would expect, we're looking at a very melancholic goddess because her people are being abused by evil things. Nevertheless, Illustrae tries to spread joy, create and nurture beauty, show kindness, and make life and love flourish wherever she can. Now, of course, the drow of Pathfinder have nothing to do with Lolf, rather it's Rovagog and demon lords and things. That doesn't mean she could not exist as a goddess. Because of all the people in desperate need of redemption, in Pathfinder's lore, the drow are definitely up there. Now let's hit it, shall we? Let's start with the new one. In 2nd edition, Elistrae's domains are darkness, freedom, moon, and travel. Her divine font allows individuals to heal. Her divine skill is stealth. The spells she grants are Pass Without Trace at 1st level, Glitter Dust at 2nd level, and Uncontrollable Dance at 8th level. Her edicts are Oppose the Tyranny of the Drow, Promote Creativity and Love, and Help People to the Path of Redemption. Elistrae's Anathema, Serve Evil Aligned Drow, Destroy Things of Beauty Without Cause, and Assist in the Oppression of Others. Her favorite weapon, of course, is the Bastard Sword. Elistrae is Chaotic Good, and her follower alignments are Neutral Good and Chaotic Good, thus she would allow, in a very flavorful fashion, both the Redeemer and the Liberator. Seems on point, right? I like it. I also like how easy it was to put together something meaningful and flavorful. Plus one to second edition. Anyway, had to homebrew a lot of these domains from 3.5 up, and of course, the obedience and the boons are all me. If you think you could do any of these better, down in the comments, my friends. Eyeless Tree, of course, and I think I've said that like 25 different ways by now, I hate everything, is chaotic good. Her domains are Chaos, Charm, Good, Darkness, and Travel, with the subdomains Moon, Redemption, and Portal. Her favorite weapon is the Bastard Sword, and her symbol, a female drow with long hair dancing before a full moon with a silver Bastard Sword. My, oh, my, that's wordy. 
To perform a list trees, deific obedience, god, now I know I've said that a different way, whatever, even the gods say her name differently. One must dance under the light of the moon whilst simultaneously practicing forms with a bastard sword. Strive to maintain correct form in both dance and swordsmanship, and invite all who see you to join in an elegant mock duel. In return, gain a plus four sacred bonus on stealth checks in areas of dim light or lower. Evangelist Booms, it's brightest night, three times a day, alter self twice a day, or see invisibility once a day. At 16th level, in any area where drow are populous, such as a drow city, but not something as broad as the Darklands, you gain a bonus on disguise checks to appear as a drow worshipper of a demon lord, or a drow if you are not one, equal to half your hit dice. If you are a drow, you also gain that bonus on bluff checks to lie about which deity you worship. And at 20th level, once per day, you may send a number of willing creatures equal to your hit dice to the nearest place of safety from drow, such as an elven settlement or a temple of a good aligned deity, but not any non-drow city or area, as per greater teleport. At the GM's discretion, you might have to first establish friendly contact with the area, and might have to perform service before you are allowed to teleport people freely into the space without repercussions. Exalted Boons, it's Bungle, three times a day. Blindness, Deafness, twice a day, or once a day, Allied Cloak. At 16th level, you may treat a Bastard Sword as a light weapon for all purposes. If you are already able to, such as by the use of Effortless Lace, you instead gain a plus two sacred bonus on attack and damage rolls with Bastard Swords. As a standard action, at 20th level, you may flourish your blade and twirl your body, invoking Illustrious power in an attempt to dispel the magic of the drow. You may immediately roll to dispel any effects with the darkness descriptor or any effects that would make someone invisible using your hit dice as your caster level within 30 feet of you. You may do this once per day and it provokes an attack of opportunity. And Sentinel Boons, it's bless thrice a day, aid twice a day, and accept affliction once per day. At 16th level, as a swift action, you may manifest an aura of shimmering moonlight in a 30 foot radius centered on yourself. Allies within the aura may use your will save bonus instead of their own on saves against fear effects and gain dark vision within the aura. And at 20th level, as a swift action, you may flourish your blade and cause your aura to increase to 90 feet for a number of rounds equal to your charisma modifier. While extended this way, all allies gain fast healing 5 in addition to previous benefits from this aura. And for that planar adventures boon, sure, why not, have freedom of movement permanently. Hooray! Gonna try to say it a fourth, fifteenth time in a seventeenth different way. Jesus, Ilistri is not a deity in Pathfinder, but they're definitely a deity that makes sense. In Pathfinder, the Drow have all been corrupted by demon lords, and as of second edition, by Rovagog. She's described as being happiest when she sees craftsmen at their work, as well as being a goddess of beauty. Rovagog likes to destroy things. Rovagog especially likes to destroy beautiful things. Yeah, this deity has a humongous problem with that. Of course she slots right into Pathfinder. I think she makes for a wonderful something on the level of an Imperial Lord as well. Leading the fight against other demon lords into the Darklands sounds like a wonderful campaign idea to me. Because who are you going to call on when you need to go down to Second Mina and take some drow that have been oppressed for centuries by a demon lord like Zura? or Abraxas and bring them up, but an Imperial Lord to combat that literal demon lord that will be waiting for you. Should a powerful cleric be like, hey, 911, except it's evil, come help us, right? Easy peasy. Dancing in Bastard Sword sounds like a swashbuckler and Marty kind of character to me. And I think if I were to play someone who worshipped a history, and I came kind of close to in a home game. Don't know if anybody knows anything about the Forgotten Realms pantheon, but we went with Shevarash instead. I'm sure this just gives me another avenue into finessing weapons all over the place. Dex Shaw Supremacy continues, jamming for it, of course, in addition to Imperial Lords versus Demon Lords, and fight! Also, does present us with some moral quandaries, doesn't it? What if the Drow don't want to be saved? Is it still a chaotic good action to bring someone to a different life who doesn't want to leave that life, the only life they know, whether or not that life is bad for them. Well, that's a good way to leave it, isn't it? Yeah, let's talk about that in the comments. And also, what do we think about this deity? Is there anybody else from the Forgotten Realms you'd like to see us convert? Have you used this deity in any of your home games at all?
down in the comments. And again, let's talk about how horrible it is to steal people from evil. As a chaotic good individual, I will definitely say that sometimes we lack a little bit of foresight. Anyway, I got a big one coming next week. This request has been sitting for a long, long time. There's been a lot of patience sniping on Wednesday afternoon worship. Next week, we will be making stats for, of all the things, the God of Christianity. Yeah, easily one of the biggest Wednesday afternoon worships I've ever made. And we will see you next Wednesday.